Well, today is another busy day for presidential candidates in the Granite State. Former President Trump back in New Hampshire for the first time since last week's indictment. But he isn't the only Republican crisscrossing the state today. We'd like to welcome now Sean Spicer, News Nation contributor and former White House press secretary in the Trump administration. Uh, Sean, thank you for being here. So let's dive right in. New Hampshire, as you know, has a history of shining a light on political underdogs. And historically, Iowa and New Hampshire account for about half of the press coverage of the entire primary season. So a lot of momentum is at stake here. Trump holding a strong lead. Uh, do you think this could be an opportunity, though, for some of the lesser known candidates to break through in a meaningful way? You know, in a normal cycle, that might be true. But I think so far, we haven't seen anybody show any any ability to get beyond 10 percent, except for Ron DeSantis in both uh, Iowa and New Hampshire. Chris Christie's gone all in there in New Hampshire. I think if anybody, he's got a shot uh, at, at getting in the mid-teens. But there is no sign of any cracks in that Trump wall in any of the early states, never mind Iowa, New Hampshire. So I think traditionally that was normally the case. But right now, again, you look at all of these polls that come out, there's nothing that shows uh, Trump to feel like he's got something to be threatened by. We're still four months away. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things that can happen, a lot of moments on the campaign trail for someone to break out. But I think where the big issue is going to come is after New Hampshire in particular. You've got South Carolina coming up after that uh, with Nikki Haley and Tim Scott. And the question is, who can get those? They always talk about how many tickets out of Iowa and New Hampshire are there. If someone can get that third or fourth ticket and everyone else starts to drop out because they've lost support and money, I think the idea is that might be their moment to try to shine. Absolutely. And there has been a lot of spending uh, leading up to this point as well. Um, so you talk about the cracks. And in New Hampshire today, Donald Trump hosting his first rally since receiving his third indictment uh, with more likely on the way. You may consider those a bit of cracks. Uh, majority of voters want to support a candidate, as you know, Sean, who can win in the general. Do you think a strong showing here will help ease any viability concerns for voters? Well, look, the funny thing about this is there's a perpetuating, a, perpetu a narrative that keeps getting perpetuated that, that Trump can't win in a general. And I, I think that right now, I mean, there's a New York Times Siena poll that just came out, showed uh, Biden and Trump tied at 43. In fact, in many cases, he does better than DeSantis. So the question is, I get people have concerns about Trump, but the question is, who would do better? Because right now, in order to get to the general, you have to win the primary, and there's only one other candidate that's getting above 10%. One of the things, Kelly, that people have to understand about how this works is in all of the primary states, there is a minimum threshold to get delegates. Sometimes it's as low as five, sometimes it's as high as 20. If you don't hit that threshold, you don't qualify for delegates. So in many states right now, the only two candidates that would qualify for delegates are Trump and DeSantis. Right now, in most states, there's not even another candidate on the Republican ballot on the Repo in the Republican field that qualifies for delegates. Yes, understood. And we've got about a minute left, Sean. But uh, Ron DeSantis, as you mentioned, he's still pulling in second place, both in New Hampshire and nationally. Uh, but there's been another big shakeup, replacing his campaign manager less than three months after launching his campaign for president. So how do you see that factoring in moving forward? You know, it's like rearranging the, the chairs on the Titanic. I mean, it, unless you're going to do something else substantial, I think replacing the campaign manager is always some way that you can tell donors and supporters, see, I'm making change. She's going to retain the role of chief strategist, so she'll be around. But this is, to me, more than anything else, a signal to donors that says, I got it. I got it. We have to make some changes. But at the end of the day, it's Ron DeSantis as a candidate that has to decide whether he's going to change his strategy and how he presents himself to donors, the tactics, the issues he brings up, because no campaign manager can make that happen and that change occur. It's up to him. So this is more than anything else, a signal to the donors and the supporters that, hey, I got it. We're going to make some changes. But at the end of the day, this is all about whether Ron DeSantis wants to change how he presents himself to primary voters. Understood. Uh, we've got about 20 seconds left, Sean, but I'm really curious. Could a third party candidate, do you think, be a factor in this race? That's the best question, Kelly. Yes is the answer. If you can tell me how the Green Party candidate does, I can tell you who wins the election. In 2016, Donald Trump won Michigan by 10,704 votes, less than a tenth of a percent. If you look at the number of states that were decided by one or two percent. A Green Party candidate that can take 20, 30, 40, 50,000 votes will easily make the difference in a lot of states. So there's no question about it. It's not about winning electoral votes for that candidate. It's what difference they can make in a lot of these states. Pennsylvania, uh, Georgia, you think about 
Cornell West and how he could do in Atlanta or Philadelphia or Pittsburgh, a lot of big urban areas where he's extremely popular. That, to me, is going to be the difference in this election. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.